The people of Europe who are defending themselves do not ask us to do their fighting. They ask us for the implements of war, the planes, the tanks, the guns, the freighters, which will enable them to fight for their liberty and for our security. We must be the great arsenal of democracy. The shadow of the conquering German armies covered Western Europe. The self-styled master race was riding high. In late 1939, 1940, when the government came to Chrysler saying, can you build tanks for us, they realized that these weren't ideal setups for the, the uh, production of tanks. So they picked a site in Warren, Michigan because of cheap land and its proximity to the city of Detroit um, and built the uh, tank plant specifically for that. The government came to the corporation with the tank and said, this is what we want, can you build it for us? So really at that point, Chrysler's engineers and manufacturing specialists took over because they had the knowledge of how to uh, build things in mass production on assembly line with replaceable and interchangeable parts. Uh, the government didn't know how to do that, we did. So uh, while it was really a, a government-owned building and operation, it was Chrysler's work and engineering and manufacturing that was really running the place. And it was from 13 months from the time Chrysler was awarded the contract to the very first uh, grant tank rolling out of the door. Uh, they hadn't even poured the floors before the first tank rolled out. While they were building the building, they were building tanks at the same time. The first tank they asked us to build was the M3 Grant tank. It was a strange looking tank, very high silhouette, so it be seen from a long way. Its main barrel was on one side of the tank and couldn't traverse all the way. Uh, had a 30 caliber machine gun mounted in the hull and nothing on the roof, kind of, and kind of thin armor. Um, most of those, or if not all of them, went to Great Britain for their armed forces. The next tank that came out in 1942 was the Sherman tank, the M4. That had much thicker armor, larger engine, uh, turret that traversed all the way around, uh, giving 360 views of high velocity, 75 millimeter, and then it had a 30 caliber machine gun in the hull and a 50 caliber on the roof. So it was really an advancement um, in tank technology. Chrysler actually built over 25,000 tanks during the war, which made up for over 25% of the entire nation's tank production. And also the German army only made 20,000 tanks. So we outpaced the entire German army with just our tank production for the Detroit tank arsenal. We did so much other things, like the Bofor guns. We built 60,000 of those complete guns with another 120,000 replacement barrels. And the amazing thing on those, that they were being built by, in Sweden and in Great Britain at the time, but they weren't built on a large scale because they were so complex and so hard to build. But what Chrysler did was they figured out how to do it on a mass production scale. They had over 2,000 local suppliers, tool and die shops, uh, small shops around here supplying the parts, and Chrysler was able to get these things together and get them out the door in a very quick manner. It would really, those went on every Navy ship, they were anti-aircraft guns, they were used all over the world, a very significant piece of military equipment. The truck behind me, which is a WC series uh, truck, it's the half-ton version. This was early in the war, this is 1940, uh, so this is when we're first gearing up for it. Most people really recognize the three-quarter ton version. Uh, which came out in 1942 and was built through 45, and that truck really became the Dodge Power Wagon. Chrysler was always the engineering company, so we had a really strong basis of engineering. We had, had the Chrysler Institute of Engineering, which was putting out master degree program engineers, um, and all those people served in, in specific areas, and really we drew upon their, all their expertise to improve manufacturing, to improve the speed of manufacturing, and really improve the product that the government was asking us to build. A lot of times they would bring us something that they wanted built and we knew we could do it better than them. And our engineers changed it and made recommendations and nine times out of 10 the government would you know, see the wisdom in that and, and change with it. So it was really the, the employees were really the backbone of everything. A lot of the people that were working here were drafted. Uh, a lot of the men went to war 
Uh, so there's large influx of uh, women into the labor market, the famous Rosie of the River. Um, these, at first, it was mostly office jobs. Very quickly, the women were on the line building the things that we needed to keep the operation rolling and really had a hand in every job throughout the company. So it was really a full effort amongst everybody.